start off with the Swerve and Hangman contract signing segment with you. Because when we just did a quick little recap of it, there's something that we've even mentioned there, and you kind of blew right by it. So I'm not sure if you view it the same way as us, because you talk about like bad days and the storm that Hangman said he had over top of him, and you know he's got to come out of it and do it for the fans, right? Mm-hmm. That whole punk was a or that whole promo was about CM Punk. Uh, yeah, I guess I didn't catch that. He said a year and a half, which brings us or shortly before they feuded, like the start of their feud last year. The drama that he had with it, that no matter what, he had this black crown hanging over top of him. He couldn't do anything about it. NDA, brawl out, all that other kind of stuff. And at the end, he says, it's finally gone. Right? He says something like, that's over with. They say he couldn't do anything about it. That whole promo. Go back and listen to it if you have to again. But if you just think, if you listen to it with CM Punk in mind, it all makes perfect sense. Hmm. And where did a lot of the drama start with CM Punk last year? Right with the CM Punk Hangman feud. Where yeah. Hangman went into business for himself and all this other stuff, right? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have to go back and listen to it again now. Or watch that over. Because I did not pick that up at all. I just was like, okay. You were depressed and you need to figure your shit out. I get it. <laughs> like, I'm depressed too and I need to figure my shit out. I get it. Yeah. But, oh, it's a little deeper than that thought. All right. He had something over top of him that he couldn't do anything about. He couldn't say anything about for a year and a half. It all lines up. Hmm. Which is why I said, it, it's crazy. Swerve was great. Swerve murdered Hangman in that promo segment. But that's because Hangman didn't go after Swerve. No. Yeah. yeah. You you said it. Hangman just he he just talked about Hangman. Like his issues. Or well maybe his issues with punk probably. <laughs> but Swerve was like, I'm coming after you. I'm coming cutting straight into you. Like, that's what he's done from the start of this thing, and that's what's making it so good. Yeah. Hangman's was a great, just general baby face promo. Great for himself. He does these promos, like, every, maybe once or twice a year, where all of a sudden, you know, it's coming from a place of, like, deep, personal, um, and maybe a little bit more poetic in regards to its... Uh, you know, metaphor, similes, kind of stuff. He goes that route. And he'll deliver a good one at least once or twice a year. That's great. Like, he had that one that was really fired up with Mox. I remember that was really, really good. Oh, yeah. The one where he's punching himself in the eye. I am a man. <laughs> I was like, all right, you're crazy. <laughs> but it, it's weird because... It's hard because he doesn't have the great promos and the one-liners and everything else. And yet he's somehow always been like the baby face, like Prince of AEW, right? From the beginning. Mm-hmm. He's always anointed. And every now and then I sit there and go like, I don't know why I like him, but I like him. And then it's because every now and then you get these heartfelt moments and stories with him. Um Like his Dark Order story and everything. Like you got certain moments that were just like, Yes. Yes. I don't know. I don't have too much of a particular feeling on Hangman, to be honest with you. Because you missed the whole Hangman story. He came in after it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't have too much feelings toward it, but definitely don't dislike him. I can't even... I really, really like Swerve. That being said, Swerve 100%. I'm not even going to say he's winning this match. Because he has to win this match. If you do not have Swerve win this match in his home of the Pacific Northwest, mm. and you know that crowd's going to love it. If yeah. Swerve doesn't win, that's malpractice. 
it's malpractice. Yeah. Um, because I've seen some of his matches in the indies, and them people are gonna they're gonna riot if he doesn't win. Because they have right. they love some swerve. And they don't get the events like other places in the countries have. Like this is only, I think, like the second or third show in the Pacific Northwest. Period. Um, so with that being said, like if you don't go there and these people are dying for it, it's a pay-per-view. Swerve out there is going to be like MJF on Long Island. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and he's everyone loves him across the board. And I love that he has to like take the little cheap stuff, like the oh, uh, we got rid of Russell Wilson and gave him to you guys here in, in Colorado. Look at how that's going. <laughs> now, the best heel thing he did was stop Nana from dancing. Yeah, that was the biggest one. He was like, no, not yeah. today. You don't get to dance today. Because <laughs> we haven't talked about it or made plans or anything for it. But, man, that first time that we hear Who's House mm-hmm. for his music and the start of the match is going to be them chanting that back and forth. If it's not, fuck you, crowd. <laughs> yeah, It's gotta be. There's no way. Like, the start of that match should just be the alternating fans uh chance someone says whose house everyone else says swerve's house whose house swerve's house whose house swerve's house that needs to be like the first like 60 seconds of the match i agree so do do you think this is the main event of wrestle dream or is it going to be darby and i christian page i'm not sure um honestly there's somebody else from that area that with this not being a title match or anything, if you're not gonna put, if you're gonna put something in the main event that's not a title oh, yeah, match, yeah, Danielson is from that area too. I forgot. You go with the dream match of the guy who's gonna retire within yeah, the next couple that years. One, then. If, I don't know. They also haven't done anything for that other than just Danielson say, "All right, I'm gonna get this match." That is true. But going back to thinking what you're saying about Darby versus Christian, maybe. Mm-hmm. I only want... that makes sense if Darby wins, but Darby should not win. Yeah. Although I guess if Christian finally gets the belt and then loses it immediately, that's cool. But only if he went back for the belt. But no, this feud needs to be done. That's the only thing that I was thinking. So Darby. So yeah, let's not have that the main. <laughs> Just so that we can make sure that feud is over. Over.